On the face of it, it is an A400 action, similar to the previous Extreme model with the three and a half inch chamber. So this is designed to cycle anything from two and three quarter inch to three and a half inch shells. So it is the ultimate sort of wild fowling machine. They've taken the original A400 uh, Extrema, give it a bit of a facelift, mainly cosmetically. The ATS in the title actually stands for Aquatech Shield. So when you're out on the foreshores, chucking it on the floor, in the salt, this thing is not gonna go rusty. So the ATS, Aquatech Shield, is Beretta's own version of a type of Cerakote, high quality anti-corrosion material. And on these two guns, you can see we've got a gray one and a green one. It coats the entire action frame and the entire barrel. What they've, what they've done with the ATS is the same as the new gray semi-auto, which we looked at for clay shooters a few weeks ago, is they've put the same kickoff mega, which is what they call it, um, in the stock. So, of course, whereas with the, the grey ATS, you would think, you know, do we really need it because we're shooting lightish loads, it's a clay gun, so 24, 28s. Obviously, these things are designed to shoot, you know, without any kind of exaggeration, big bombs. So you need them to be as smooth as possible. So they've got the kickoff mega in the pistol grip, so it doesn't get in the way uh, and it doesn't physically move in your shoulder like the previous kickoff um, model on other Brettas. And I really like it. I haven't shot one of these yet. I'm quite keen to try one because uh, I think to say, you know, for them to say that it's the the, the lowest recoil in terms of any Brett, any any semi-automatic worldwide, is uh, is something I'd be uh, interested to investigate. So on top of that, you have got this soft comb. Um, I would imagine that's been copied from another manufacturer, beginning with B, which is also part of the Bretta Group because they have a similar setup on um, some of their super sport models with the Comfortech stock and the M2s, et cetera. So you've got this really, really nice soft cheek piece. Again, if you're sticking massive shells through the thing, the last thing you want is some horrible plastic or rubber just grinding at your face, whereas this is really nice, really soft touch, and, uh, and I really like that, to be honest. The rubber grip, super, super grippy. If you're out on the marshlands, even pigeon shooting in the wet, your hands are going to be slippy and on a plastic auto, they're going to be even more slippy. So the idea with this is it is super, super grippy and it really is grippy. I keep using the word grippy because it's grippy. Uh, these rubber inserts, which I'm a big, big, big fan of. As with the grey ATS, uh, the, the, the Sporting XL, it's got the big bolt handle, the extended sort of mag release. It's nice and big and nice and chunky because again, Chances are, when you're using this, you're going to be clobbered up in camo gear, freezing cold, fingers are broke, so you just need to be able to slam the buttons and get on with it. In terms of the actual gun itself, um, it is they are available in 26, 28 and 30 inch barrels. On the back end, we have got Bretta's new ultralight recoil pad. Not really sure why they've done that, to be honest with you. I mean, the thing weighs like seven and a half pound, but still, and doesn't recoil, but to keep the weight down, uh, along with the spacer. It's a standard fit, so if we needed to make it longer or shorter, etc., depending on the, the height of the shooter, no problem there. And likewise, in terms of fit, you get a set of shims to cast it, drop it, etc., like all other Bretta semi autos. Um, step rib, really like that, really like that from, a, from a, a mounting point of view. Seven mil parallel, I believe. Optima HP chokes. As you would expect with a wild fowling machine, it is superior steel shot proof, so magnum proofed, up to three and a half inch. Essentially, they don't make a 12 bore cartridge that you can't put in this gun, which again makes it the ultimate kind of wild fouling tool. Um, the black chokes that are sticking out at the end are the Optima HP diamond liquid crystal coated black ones, the black edition chokes. And so what they've done is they've put every coating they can in the world on it to make sure that the thing doesn't go rusty, and that is no exception. Just to point out, if you did want to shoot anything tighter than half, because this gun is superior steel shot proofed, then the answer to that would be a Muller while Waterfowl H2O choke. This choke has no limitations regardless of the material or the size. So if you wanted to shoot some extreme geese or you know even pigeons, you could argue with steel shot, that is the answer. Please get in touch with us for details about Muller chokes. On to the patterns, something prairie-ish, which is the one with the green, and the other one is called Camo Veil. 
quite like both of these. I mean, let's face it, there's billions of different camo patterns on the market and manufacturers have got to keep stepping it up. I know at the minute what's quite popular is the um, the sort of digital camo on some of the rifles, particularly the Tika rifles and some of the, the Frankie semi-autos. But essentially, you've got one that's a bit beigey and one that's a bit greeny. So depending on what you're doing, pick your beigey or your greeny one and crack on with it. And a nice little touch, they've managed to just get the Bretta logo, which I think they have done on previous models to be fair, into the insert in the, uh, in the forehand with the word Aqua, okay? So one of the new features on this gun, and I can't remember if it was on the gray sport as well, I don't think it was, is they've got this thing called a B-lock forehand um, nut. So like I said previously, we've had tons of Brettas in the shop with this terrible taper thing on the front. People screw them down. They had a little, um, a little recess inside that could get moisture in, which used to go a bit rusty. And eventually they get stuck and you end up getting the mole grips on them and they look bloody awful and that's what's happened. So this new system means you can essentially unlock the top of the, un to, yeah, remove the forend with a 60 degree turn, I think. So it's literally, you put your hand on it, give it one twist and it comes off. That's it. And inside, largely there's nothing that can go rusty. Oh, I like that, that's cool. So four end off. And like I say, as with all 400 models, you've got your piston, which with these little teeth on is the, the self cutting one, the self cleaning one. So the idea is that is the more that you shoot, it doesn't get clogged up because you know, some wild fowlers and gamekeepers, etc., which is what this gun will appeal to, will clean the gun on a regular basis. Some will clean it when it stops actually working. So that's quite, that's that's a nifty bit of kit. Um, just to touch on the cartridges again, two and three quarters to three and a half inch. This will not cycle anything smaller than probably 30 gram two and three quarter inch cartridges because it's not designed to. It's a specific tool for a specific purpose. So if you like the look of this, you know, I'll go clay shooting with that you might be disappointed because it isn't really for it. Unless you wanted to use good quality 28 gram cartridges with big brass heads, I don't think it would be ideal for clay shooting. Okay, so uh, we talked about the camo features, we talked about the pattern, so internally we have got what Bretta called the, the blink system, which has been used on previous 400 models, and that's all to do with the, the lock time in terms of the bolt going into the action. So, you know, if you've got a ton of birds and they keep coming, it just increases the lock time. But I would imagine we're talking about milliseconds, but when you're the world's biggest shotgun manufacturer, you have to take advantage of little, little bonuses like that. Okay, so these two, both 28 inch. Um, personally, I really like the gray. The green I'm not so keen on, but again, it'll be interesting to see over time how these coatings last. This is still quite a new model. I would be very, very surprised if it's not as tough as nails because ultimately Bretta will have done a lot of research into the coating before they put it on the gun. And I think, um, particularly at the price point, which if you want to know, please get in touch, this is going to be an absolute winner for people that want to shoot gas-operated semi-autos. What you've got to remember is, as we've spoke about before, the difference between a Benelli is it's inertia-operated, these are gas, ultimately, you will get less recoil and less movement from a gas one, but on the, on the flip side is they do require a bit more maintenance. Personally, for wild fouling, I would want the slightly heavier gun like the Bretta than the Benelli, because again, if you've got an inertia operated shotgun, there's very few moving parts, which is what adds to the weight. Standard warranty of these is three years. If you want to extend it to 10 at the point of purchase from your Bretta dealer, you can, not a problem, but, this for now is the new kid on the block in terms of the Beretta A400, dedicated wild fouling tool. I'm Matt Morgan, you've been amazing. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon.